Welcome to Better View. In this video, I'm going to give a quick review of liver of ox. Liver is the largest gland in the body, placed right side, placed in the right side of the abdominal cavity in oblique downward and forward direction. It extends from the lumbosacral angle to the level of seventh and eighth rib. This point is important. It extends from the lumbosacral angle to the level of seventh and eighth rib. It is the largest gland of the body and is placed in the right side of the abdomen. Okay. It presents two surfaces, parietal and visceral. Parietal surface is convex. Uh, it is lateral, molded in abdominal surface of the diaphragm. The falciform ligament is attached to the parietal surface and caudotorsally it bears some costal impressions. Okay. The visceral surface is concave medial surface showing impressions of the visceral organs. It has various uh, impressions and porta hepatica. What is porta hepatica? Porta hepatica is a deep fissure that acts as a hilus of the liver. Okay, so in case of kidney and lung, we talk about hilus. So in liver, we have porta hepatica that act as the hilus of liver situated above the middle of the surface and through it, the portal vein, hepatic artery, hepatic plexus enter and hepatic duct and lymph nodes uh, lymph vessels exit. Okay, so this is important. What is porta hepatica and what are the structures that enter and exit through it? Okay, so the structures that enter in uh, via the porta hepatica into the liver are portal vein, hepatic artery and hepatic plexus. So they enter into the liver while hepatic duct and lymph vessels exit the liver. Okay, now remember that portal vein is entering, okay, but the hepatic vein is not exiting, okay. Why? Because hip, uh, see, I'm going to talk about it later. There's caudal vena cava here, and the hepatic vein are going to directly pour their blood into the caudal vena cava, okay. So the hepatic veins will not exit via the porta hepatica, okay. The visceral surface, as I said, it has certain impressions of visceral organs. So first we have omasal impression. It is large, deep, placed below the porta hepatica. Then we have abomasal impression, which is placed below the omasal impression. Then we have reticular imp impression that is a little bit narrow and shallow as compared to the omasal impression. And it extends from the esophageal notch to the anterior of the ventral border. Okay. The last one is cystic impression, which is above and lateral to the omasal impression. Okay, so what are these various impressions? C. First, we have a structure here, which is called the esophageal notch. Okay, it is for the passage of esophagus. Okay, now this is the renal uh, reticular impression. Sorry, this is the reticular impression. We have abomasal impression, omasal impression here. Okay, so these are the three impressions that I talked about. Then the cystic impression is for the gallbladder. Then we have renal impression here. Okay, so if we remove this gallbladder, you will see the impression for it. And porta hepatica or the porta hepatis is present here. You can see various uh, tubes or vessels are entering or exiting through this. Okay. So this is it for the surfaces. Remember, we have parietal and visceral. And C, this is the body. And this is the diaphragm. And liver, suppose it is placed like this on the right side. Okay, so the parietal surface will face the diaphragm. Okay, that is why it is convex because diaphragm is dome shaped. So the surface that is facing it will also be dome shaped. So it is convex. But the visceral surface is concave, right? So this is the parietal surface. This is the visceral surface. It is concave and it is facing, uh, facing the visceral organs. That is why it has various impressions. While the parietal surface, it is facing the diaphragm, but caudotorsally on the sides, uh, it is related to the uh, ribcage. That is why it will bear some costal impressions, okay? Not too much, uh, but some coastal impressions uh, can be seen in the parietal surface. One thing to note is that all these impressions that I'm talking about 
costal impression, avomasal, omasal, reticular, and cystic impression. You will see them when you have a specimen that is uh, preserved intact. Okay, so if you have an animal and you preserved it in formalin and then you dissected it and took out the liver, and when you examine this liver, you will see these impressions. But if we are talking about a live animal or an animal whose liver was preserved after dissection, so you took the liver from the animal and then put it in formalin for preservation, then you will not see these impressions. Okay, so you should take a, a note of this thing. Now, let us come to borders. There are four borders in liver, dorsal, ventral, lateral and medial. The dorsal uh, border is thick. It presents caudate lobe and renal impression. Okay, so caudate lobe will come to that. Renal impression, I've said it is present here. Then we have the ventral border that is convex and thin. The lateral border is also thin and it is marked by the umbilical fissure or the umbilical notch. And the medial uh, border is thick. It presents an esophageal notch for the passage of esophagus. Above it, fossa vena cava is present for the posterior vena cava, also called the caudal vena cava, embedded partially in the body of liver. Okay, so this is the caudal vena cava. This is esophageal notch. Okay, and this vena cava, if you remove it, you will see a groove for the vena cava. Okay, that is called fossa vena cava. So this is it uh, for the borders. Then lobes. So in other animals, lobes are much more prominent and they're significant. But in case of ox, the lobes are not clearly divided by fissures. Okay, so the division of lobes is virtual in case of cattle. Okay, so virtually they are divided into, uh, the liver is divided into four lobes, right, left, middle, and caudate. Though there is some discrepancy in the naming of these lobes. Okay, and I'll come to that a little bit later. So one thing that you should note is the caudate lobe. It is the important one. It, uh, it is thick, quadrilateral, and present at dorsal border. It has a renal impression that is a deep impression for the right adrenal and cranial end of the right kidney. Okay, so this is important. So let us just talk about these lobes. Okay, see. Here you can see four lobes. We have left hepatic, caudate, quadrate, and right. Okay. So this big one is the left hepatic lobe or the left lobe. This one is the right lobe. This one is the quadrate lobe. And this one is the caudate lobe. Okay. Now you can see that this division is virtual. Okay, there are no fissures, but in case of other species like dog, horse, you will see separation. Not in, uh, not so much in case of horse, but in dog, you can definitely appreciate uh, these divisions. Once again, there's a diagram of liver of ox, and you can see that the division into lobes is only virtual. Okay, but still we divide it into four lobes, right, left, middle, and caudate, sometimes the middle is also called the quadrant okay and some uh, in some places you will also see the caudate lobe is also called the caudate process okay so they are the same thing sometimes the caudate lobe is said to have a caudate process okay so different things are written in different texts no need to be confused the only division that you will see is virtual but caudate lobe is significant because you can appreciate it as the, a little bit more as compared to the other ones. Okay. So we have talked about the lobes. Structure, uh, by that I just mean the coat. So if we are talking about the covering of the liver, it is called glissens capsule. Okay, glissens capsule uh, consists of outer serous and inner fibrous coat. Okay, glycine capsule has two coats, outer serous and inner fibrous. The fibrous coat invaginates into the parenchyma of the liver in form of structures, fiber structures called trabeculae. And the parenchyma is represented by portal triad. 
portal tract we'll discuss in histology in gross anatomy uh, you cannot appreciate uh, these portal triads very well but you can definitely appreciate glycine's capsule okay it has two parts outer cells and in a fi fibrous and the fibrous coat will invaginate into the parenchyma in the form of trabeculae histologically you can appreciate the trabeculae very easily now let us talk about the attachments of the liver the attachments of the liver to various organs and uh, the wall of the abdomen is called ligament okay so in case of intestine we use the term mesentery in stomach we use the term omentum in case of liver we call these attachments ligaments and liver has five ligaments falciform round right lateral caudate and lesser omentum okay so the first four are ligaments and the last is omentum because it will connect to the stomach okay the first one falciform ligament extends from the umbilical fissure to the esophageal notch along the parietal surface and it will connect liver to the diaphragm okay so just wait a minute uh, here you have the umbilical notch this structure is called the umbilical notch and as i have said this is the diaphragm this is the liver and the parietal surface will face the diaphragm and it is connected to the diaphragm via a ligament called the falciform ligament okay the second one is the round ligament of liver that is the vestige of umbilical vein and it connects the umbilical fissure to the umbilicus okay so it is the vestigial form of the umbilical vein in the adult animal in case of fetus there will be a umbilical vein okay so this structure right here the structure is called the round ligament of the liver okay the next one is right lateral ligament it connect the dorsal border of the right lobe to the costal part of the diaphragm then we have the caudate ligament which will connect the caudate lobe to the right kidney abdominal vena cava and part of the pancreas the last ligament uh, or oh, sorry the last attachment is the lesser omentum lesser omentum extends from porta hepatis up to the esophageal notch and connect to omasum and lesser curvature of abomasum it has two parts hepatoduodenal and hepatogastric fold okay hepatoduodenal and hepatogastric folds are two parts of the lesser omentum and it will connect the liver to the omasum and lesser curvature of the abomasum okay so in this diagram you can see this structure right here just adjacent to the porta hepatica is lesser omentum okay so these are the five attachments of the liver they are very important all five of them lastly we'll talk about the blood and nerve supply so the nutritional blood supply is provided by the hepatic artery that is responsible to 20% of the blood entering into the liver while the functional blood supply is provided by the portal vein that is 80% of the blood supplied to the liver okay so 80% of the blood that is coming to the liver is provided by portal vein for various functions right and so this is part of that portal system while the hepatic artery will provide oxygenated blood to provide nutrition and oxygen to the liver parenchyma okay and nerve supply is provided by hepatic plexus so this is it for the liver of ox if you found this video useful then please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you